Anyway, let's move on to our first main topic today. Chris, what is our first main topic today? First topic is from Preston Walden. Hi, John and gang. Reports have just come out that each MCU show on Disney Plus will have a total budget from 100 to 150 million, 12 to 25 million per episode. This is historic and very exciting. My question is, if successful, do you think this could not only be the norm for Disney, but also for other streaming services such as Netflix and Peacock? Had to get that in there, LOL. <laughs> Thanks. Do you think this is going to set a precedent? Well, look, one of the things that everybody's been really excited about when talking about the upcoming MCU properties on Disney Plus was this thing is, they're going to have movie budgets. They're going to have movie budgets. And the reality is, no, they don't. Not really, because when everybody thinks of a movie budget, they're thinking, oh, every episode I'm going to see of this thing is going to have a $100 million budget. When, no, that's not the case. You see, let's go for an argument sake here that these each of these series are going to be six episodes. They might be up to eight, but I, I've heard the number six. But let's go with six. Let's go with a low number. Six episodes. So that basically means you've got each series is going to be three two-hour movies in essence, in length, right? If they're spending $150 million on, say, the Hawkeye series, well, that means every two-hour movie is actually going to be a $50 million budget, not a $150 million budget. That means every episode is going to have like a $25 million budget or a little bit less than that, all that kind of stuff. Now, that is still astronomical for television. Don't get me wrong. Uh, all I'm all I'm saying is that when I keep hearing the phrases, and I've done this myself, when I keep hearing the phrases of, you know, uh, you know, this this series is going to have the the budget of a movie, that kind of gives the impression that every time we watch one of the episodes, that episode is going to have a hundred million dollar budget, but it's not. So you're talking six episodes, the equivalent of three of three full length movies having the budget of a MCU movie. That is still unprecedented that is still very high very 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 few i think you can count on one hand the number of shows that have even gotten close to those types of budgets it's still huge i just want to make sure that as we as audience members who are used to the mcu and what it has that we have you know not delusions of grandeur that every single episode is going to have you know world-class movie visual effects and world-class this and world-class that it's going to be great for television but just understand it's not actually full movie budgets when you break it down like that. I, I don't know, Rob, you, first of all, this is, this is an incredible amount of money they're going to be spending on these shows. There's no question about that, but you know, I'm not the only one, right? That was a little bit concerned. It's like, everybody seems thinking that every single episode is going to have the budget of Ant-Man. It's not. How do you respond to that? Well, first of all, I got to say, you know what fit Charlie Hunnam really well? Gypsy Danger. The Jaeger Gypsy <laughs> Danger. I just want to point that out. But I'll tell you, um, I, I think you're right, but these are still... You know, they're the budgets of healthy, healthy, you know, what used to be healthy studio movies, but they're still very high. And also because they're shooting on the same sets and I'm sure they're going to amortize costs. I'm, I'm very excited about these shows. I saw Elizabeth Olsen was on Jimmy Kimmel the other night, I think Monday night. And she was talking about how she got her job. She couldn't say anything about WandaVision, but she did say something interesting. She said that Kevin Feige came up with the idea of WandaVision himself. It's his, it was his idea I'm not surprised and that when he hired Paul Bettany and uh, to come back and play vision and her he met with them separately like he called them up and he Paul Bettany thought he was gonna get fired yeah. from the MCU <laughs> and I, 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 I she didn't say anything about the show I just thought that was pretty cool so I mean if you've got Kevin Feige himself calling the actors in to talk I mean this is I think the quality of these shows is going to be of paramount importance to to Marvel, and uh, I, I'm I'm very excited to see what we're going to get. I think John, this is going to be a way that the Marvel universe can show they can really stretch the boundaries of what Marvel is going to mean as a brand moving forward. And I think WandaVision is going to be one of those shows. I don't care how much it costs, as long as it's good. And I think these are going to be really good. Oh, but we should care how much it costs. Because if these things do cost too much, it doesn't matter how good they are, they're going to stop. They're going to stop making them. If they start losing money because they're irresponsible with their money and all that kind of stuff, it's going to stop. So as a fan, I care how much it costs because I don't want them to, you know, for lack of a better term, blow their proverbial loads and they realize we're not being cost effective. Now, the, the question asked, could this become the norm for all the streaming services like Peacock and all that kind of stuff? 
No, it can't because that's not sustainable. Like when you're MCU properties, you've got some foundational precedent that says we can spend we can spend money on this because we really do believe that our MCU content is going to be a huge drawing point to get people to sign up to Disney Plus. So there's cost to benefit ratio there for things like that. When you're doing Lord of the Rings, you can say we have underlying precedents here to show we're going to have cost to benefit ratio that says this is going to bring a lot of people into Amazon Prime who may not already be Amazon Prime members to watch a Lord of the Rings show. With the, but you got to be careful about when you call those shots. There are only so many MCUs, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings. There's only so many of those properties you can spend that kind of money on. So, no, I don't think this is going to become the norm. I think we're going to see all these streaming services probably have their one crown jewel or something like that where maybe they'll spend this type of MCU money. But I don't think it's going to become the norm across the industry. How, what, do you, what do you think about that, Rob? Well, I, I think, you know, TV shows, not every TV show obviously is created equal and not every streaming service is, is, is created equal. It really depends. I mean, the one thing about these shows is these actors are going to be a lot more expensive than the actors that are, say, normal TV stars because they're coming off of very expensive feature films. I mean, feature films that were not only expensive to make, but made a lot of money. So that means their quotes rise. And I think that Marvel... They have a really great production methodology in place, and I think they know how to keep costs down. And they'll be able to, like any great science fiction, fantasy, or, or, or horror TV show, they amortize their costs because they'll be able to build set pieces and things that they can use across shows. Mm -hmm. And I think they're going to actually figure out a way to give us bigger and better TV shows, the likes of which we've never seen before because of the way they're controlling the production. And the fact that, look, Star Trek shows were able to be, uh, up until Discovery, always reuse set pieces and things. Famously, the engine room of the Voyager, the, the antimatter intermix chamber, was the intermix chamber from Star Trek The Motion Picture in 1979. So I think, knowing Kevin Feige's affinity for Star Trek, they're probably taking a lot of production cues from the Berman era of Trek, which had two shows in production at the same time along with feature films, and they're going to be able to make use of all of this stuff. So I think not only are we going to sh see shows that are really well made, we're going to see shows that are incredibly cost-effectively produced. And I'm excited about that. But I don't think it's going to be the norm for streaming shows. Marvel is unique. It's unique here, as it always has been. And, and yet there's lessons to be learned. So mm. we'll see. Guys, the question is, what do you think about that? Do you think like spending this type of money on shows, do you think that become the norm? Do you think they should? Do you think they shouldn't? What do you make of all this? Jump down in the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right.